Okay, should be there. We're live. Oh yeah. Hey everybody. Hi. We are. Can you see it already? Because I don't. Not yet. Stream live. They say we're live, but I'm not seeing it on your. There we go. Okay, we are in fact live. It looks like. Yep, we're both here. Cool. Awesome. I'll share that. Share now. Boom. Good. Okay. Thanks. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, JP Morgan to the Practical Magic Show episode three, titled How to Change Other People, which I think is a super <laughs> fun title, so we'll talk more about yeah. we picked out what that means. It's so just, like wrong. You're not supposed to say that. I know, wrong. but that's why we both like it. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm deeply honored to have you here. You, I think mm. you know how much you mean to me. You're my first coach and you still impact me every single day. But, you know, if I were to intro you to those of you who don't know you, you know, I often refer to you as the wizard himself. You're a <laughs> phenomenal coach. And, you know, the, the idea of the Practical Magic Show is to interview people who create so effortlessly that it looks like magic. Mm. And then figure out what are you doing mm. so that we can do it too. That's the idea. And cool. so when I think about you, I think, I mean, just my personal experience of you is that you have a th you've been a self, you know, employed entrepreneur for over what? Well, entrepreneur since I was a kid, essentially since I was fifteen. So like, I don't yeah, know, pretty much your whole life. Like Twenty five years, yeah. yeah. I've witnessed you create seventy five thousand dollars at the snap of your fingers. You know, you mm -hmm. have this incredible mm -hmm. business. You have a massive impact, but probably for me, even with all of that and how you help mm -hmm. me grow my business, everything, the biggest impact that you have had on my life experience is how to change other people. And I'll never forget, I brought to you in one of our conversations, a whole bunch of complaints about Siba, my husband. And I was like, yeah. waiting for this validation. And, you know, and what I got back was the question, how are you creating that? Mm. And I was like, I'm not creating, he's another human being. Like I get yeah. it with money, I get it with the business, but like not another person. And I loved, that that's not where your create you, your creative power has no limits, mm. and so um, that's my intro of you. And mm. the question to sort of piggyback on that is, how does creating other people work like magic? Mm. Well, what makes something magic for me is kind of some nonlinear indirect experience of cause. Like if I like push something and it moves, like there's no magic in that. For me, it's magic when it's like, I can't connect all the dots, right? It's not like, it's not, it's nonlinear. It's not, it's like, it's got a, there's something else involved. There's something greater than me at play in it as well. And so like, I think when there's magic happening, it's also not just something random that's happening, right? There's like this middle space where I know that I had an influence and I had a role to play. I didn't control it, but I also, it wasn't just happening without, if I, if I hadn't brought my will to bear and brought some expression, it, it might probably wouldn't have happened or it might not have happened. So it's like, it's like a dance. It's like, oh my God, that was such a magical dance or whatever. We had such a magical night. You, when you, when somebody uses that word, you're expressing that both you had something to do with it, but something else, something greater was brought to bear on that experience. It's, you know, something beyond the two of us or whatever. Um, and so when I'm changing another person and, and it's happening magically, I'm not trying to make them different, but I'm also not just saying, I'm just going to accommodate everything the way that it is or walk away from it. You know, it's like, you know, what if there's a third option? And that's where I, that's what I love and where I live, the third option. I really love how you talk about that third option, that space in between, just like the linear moving the rock, so mm -hmm. to speak, and then this other greater force at play. I just recently read, um, let's see if I can remember it, a definition of magic was the miracles that occur when we operate outside of the logic. Hmm. And I think yeah. that's a great definition when we're talking about changing other people because people don't operate logically. So maybe we should slow down for just a second and mm. talk about what we mean or what you mean. I'm sorry, you interpret what it means to change another person because we're not talking about yeah. manipulating influence or anything like that. No, 
No. And and speaking of magic, let me just prioritize the broadband on my um, computer because you're getting a bit pixeled. I don't know if it's my connection. No one, am I coming across okay? Getting a tiny bit choppy for a minute here. All right. Okay. So this will probably help. Okay. Um, yeah. So people have this idea that you can't change other people. I don't think that's true. In fact, I think it's impossible not to change a person. And especially when you get married, you realize that like we are actually bleeding into each other constantly. I can't think a thought without it impacting your life. My wife, you know, she's got something going on in her body. If she's sick, I'm affected. Like if she's got a thought, I'm affected and vice versa. And that happens upward, downward. It's just, it's a fact. It's like we are, the boundary of an individual is the lie, right? Like we are constantly affecting and influencing everybody. There's a book called Connected by um, James Fowler and Nicholas Christakis, which talks about They've proven through systems and th uh, mathematics and analysis of networks that the six degrees of separation thing, which is like, you know, everybody is connected through six degrees at most. But the other thing that they discovered, they called three degrees of influence. And they can actually measure the influence that people have on each other up to three degrees in separation in a network. So that means your friend's sister's friend that I don't know his influence on me through our relationship. And so if she votes in a particular way, there's a measurable impact that her voting has on me through the relationship chain. If wow. she's overweight or if she smokes, the chance that I'm going to be a smoker is actually increased. If she decides to smoke and start smoking, the likeliness that I smoke goes up. She's influencing me even though she doesn't know me. So who we are, our behaviors, our thoughts, our opinions bleed through the network. So that's like surround yourself with the five people that you want to be like. And I'm like, shit. How about I be the person that I want to have an influence on up because there's 125 people through my five closest relationships that are becoming more like me through my choices. How I am with my wife affects that. And so the, the starting point for changing other people is the realization that we can't not. We are always changing other people. That's so I just want to pause there for one second because that's that's fucking huge. Yeah. That's so huge. That's so fucking huge because I think at least for me when I think about changing other people it's usually self motivated <laughs> yeah. to be more <laughs> what I would like please yeah right yeah. <laughs> or at least like if they change it still benefits me right but there's this other kind of lens that you just put on it which is there's almost this kind of element of personal responsibility mm -hmm. in a not like dramatic way but yeah or at least an important awareness Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll take it one step further because basically, you know, I'm sharing a perspective that kind of helps somebody relax around the idea of people having autonomy and I should just leave them to themselves. And, you know, and so, but then you're like, well, but we're all influencing everybody. So let me do my best for their sake, but I'll actually take it. I'll go even one step closer to the, to the wrong idea. And I'll, I would, I actually come from a place of like the purpose in my life is to create a more loving world and to create more love in the world. And I've all I've got access to is my idea of, about what more loving is. And guess what? I'm going to do that with everything, whether that's picking up a piece of trash in the street or, or doing what I need to do and saying what I need to say for you to smile and, and to see your own beauty. Like I'm going to come into you and your world and I'm going to bring beauty and I'm going to bring love because that's my purpose in this planet. If you don't like that, then try to stop me. And so in the same way that a person would be like, I'm going to go and take and get whatever I can from everybody. And it's like they're on a mission and they just see people as like collateral damage and whatever. I'll just go get what I want from them. It's the same kind of idea. I, only difference for me is I'm my purpose, my intention is to come from love. And so I want to create the most loving experience I can in everybody. And I totally get that there's some people that will have a philosophical or moral dilemma with that. They believe in autonomy and you shouldn't have influence. Like, well, okay, then stay away from me because if I'm near you, I'm going to help you feel better. I'm going to help you find more of your power. I'm going to help you be more free. I'm going to help you see more beauty. I'm going to create more love in your life. And if you don't want that, stay away. Cause I'm coming like a, like a freight train of that possibility in the world. I, my purpose is to create as much of that as I can. Um, so I actually believe that, it's okay to go and try to change people's opinion and try to change who people are. What makes it right or wrong for me is not the idea of autonomy. And you should, it's like, are you coming from love or are you coming from fear? Which usually looks like self-interest, you know, and a zero sum game. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about changing somebody, these are the places that I'm coming from. So if I'm trying to change my wife, 
And the, and the, 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 the most important fact factor in this is your willingness to be fucking honest with yourself because it's very easy to take these ideas that I just shared, speak them, pretend you believe in them, but really lie to yourself. You're actually using that as a fucking masquerade for the fact of the matter that you're just trying to get something from somebody and manipulate them. And so for me, honesty is a really high value. And that to me, if, if I'm not being honest with myself, then I will use these as stories and I'll really just try and be egoic and try to get something from somebody and change them for my own personal gain. So when I'm conscious, when I'm honest, it's like, what would be of most service to everybody? What does my heart love for, for the self as, as all? My family of humanity is what one of the words that I'll, phrases that I'll use. And so it's like what my heart speaks, I trust that. And I'm going to bring that into the world. So we can talk about how to change people, but I want to really establish what that is and why I'm yeah. okay with it. That's really important because you talk about how, you know, you, there's mm -hmm. always the how we, you know, we like the how, you know, from, mm -hmm. from the human perspective, give me the seven steps and whatever, but there's always things to sit under the how as a foundation and mm -hmm. always been great and awareness to that and so if i'm just kind of reflecting back what i'm really hearing is that the intention coming from a honesty b love and c your personal mission to just it's actually in service to the other person it's not just manipulative personal gain matters a lot right i'll just make i'll just share an example now to bring us into the how that's, yeah, that's coming great. to mind as you're talking okay. like Sometimes my wife asks me to open a jar. She's like, oh, I can't do it. Can you do it to me? And I will get, I'll have the thought in my head. It's like, oh, fucking hell again. It's like, come on. Like, can't you just fucking turn the thing? It's like oh, some fear-based egoic judgment will come up. I don't have time. You should be able to handle like, and it's like, okay, slow down. Notice that thought and that judgment. And it's like, if I, from that place, try to change her and be like, come on, you can do it. Then I'm trying to like get her to be something she's not because I can't put up with what she is, which is a resistance to my own self. And so the first and most important thing always is to get back to peace in my heart. I call it allowing, right? Just forgiveness. It's okay. Not judging the fact that she can't open the jar. And it's a silly example. It maybe happened once or twice, but just, it just came to me. But, and then it's like, and then in that space, then it's like, when I'm not in judgment, there's like just a blank canvas of infinite possibility. And it's like, what would I love? And it's like, I actually would not for, for my sake, but I actually would love her to know that she can open that she is strong enough. And then I actually know that like right now she's, you know, had the baby, she's not feeling strong in her body. And she's like, this is like a thing. Right. And so it's like, I know that she wants to feel strong. And I know that part of her asking me to open that sometimes or certain things like, can you lift this? Can you carry that? It's actually an expression of her not feeling the strength that she is. And so when I really slow down, it's like, there's, I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like we're not separate. There's, there's the, my own projection and judgment, but there's also my knowing of the capacity for strength that she has that she might not be connected to in that moment. And so, and then if I can then how do I change her to have her be more strong for her sake, for the sake of the whole of the union of us? It's like I go into the, well, the, the how is to see her that way, to see the strength that she is, the strength that she has. And like, like you can do that. I'm going to, I'm going to help you or I'm going to stand right here. But like, like, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the state of being of believing that she is strong and seeing her that way that actually has her become more strong. Like when you tell somebody they're beautiful, they feel beautiful and then they look more beautiful objectively because they like straighten their spine and they smile and they have a glow in their eyes and it's like, and it works. It's like the simplest example. And by seeing my wife as strong, instead of challenging her for not going to the gym or working out by seeing her and telling her she's strong. I mean, I've done it multiple times around strength. It's like, she just starts working out. Like she was hitting the bag this morning doing the boxing workout. It's like, and the, so the action of a strong woman follows the seeing of a husband that is, she is strong and she rises to meet that. We're both, when I see it in her, she sees it in her. And then she takes the actions that meets that. Mm. That is a fantastic example. And I like to systematize things. So let me just mm -hmm. complete that back and we'll, we'll see if I got it. <clears throat> so the first is to become aware of any thought or judgment that you're mm. seeing about the other person and note that that's a, that's something that you need to resolve in yourself. So we might come back mm -hmm. to that. The second mm -hmm. though, once you see that to forgive yourself for it, 
Don't mm. judge yourself for judging and bring yourself back to peace in your heart. Mm. Once you're in that space of peace in your heart, you're asking yourself, what would I love? What would I love mm -hmm. instead of what I'm experiencing? And when you ask yourself, what do you love? And you're coming from this place of peace in your heart. What I heard you doing was kind of a compassionate acknowledgement of where they are, which I think is important because you're not doing this sort of like, bullshitting yourself thing where you're like no 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 you're not making excuses for them you're just acknowledging like hey she maybe isn't feeling the strongest right now and this is what's going on from a place of compassion once you've done that you can create a space to begin to see her strong or to see that person the way you want them to be and yes. as you do you want to add to that well there's two parts to that okay. one is seeing them in your imagination as that thing Mm -hmm. And the other is seeing the actuality that already exists that you were missing before. And those two I, things combined is like a turbocharge. Okay. That is an, I love that you, we're going to come back to that, that second piece in just a second, but thank you for adding that in. Cause that's critical. Mm -hmm. Then I heard what you did. Oh, it says my broadcast is a little blurry. You look clear on here. It was for a minute yeah. before, but. We can hear okay. you. That's the important part. Yeah, it is. Okay. Then the, the second part or the, the, what came after that I heard is that you voice it, you acknowledge her out loud for that. Oh yeah. Right. And, and then she, that person then begins to rise to meet that in, in the sort of magical way. So mm -hmm. I want to kind of pull back to this part about seeing them that way, because I mm -hmm. know for me, that's the hardest part. And maybe it's the hardest because I'm skipping the steps before. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. but, <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about the seeing them that way in your imagination and the mm -hmm. seeing them that way in the actuality that you missed because mm -hmm. here's where I can see myself or others going that they're too attached to the reality that that person isn't or can't become mm -hmm. and that maybe they're so maybe that just leads into the second part that they're so caught up in that judgment that they can't let themselves see the actuality of that person being different. So mm -hmm. can you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what, what you said is, is the most important piece. Whenever I'm not able to see something that I would love, it's because I'm too busy seeing the thing that I wouldn't love is in the way. And so it's like, if, if I'm busy seeing weakness or annoyance, not just like, oh, oh, oh that's okay. But like, mm, come on, is it really, have I really let go? Have I really fallen in love with, with what is? in this moment or am I still kind of micro judging it is still not enough as in trying to like imagine something better than that. You know, imagination and reaction or response to something you don't want entrenches the thing you don't want. It just represses it and makes it bigger and more alive. And you're kind of setting up a, a dichotomy. And so there's a, and this is so subtle, but it's like the deepest and most important thing in my own experience of self creation is there's a difference between responding to something in you and letting that go completely and birthing and conceiving and creating something from nothing. And so, so the experience, go ahead. I was just going to ask if you could say a little bit more about that, maybe in the context of this example we've been using. Yes. So there's the, um, there's the conscious awareness that, Oh, I was judging her as not strong. And I was in projecting my own, you know, need for more time, whatever, like just something onto her. Oh, okay, so I was doing that and I can just stop doing that. And because I'm no longer having that inner dialogue in this moment, that means that thing is gone. That's mm -hmm. what I would call spiritual bypass, mm -hmm. right? Like, like actually just because I'm not thinking about it in this moment doesn't mean that I don't have an embodied uh, judgment that's still below the surface of awareness. And so once the dialogue's out of my mind, if there's any remnant of tension in my chest or in my throat or like a butterfly in my belly, if there's any feeling, I might not having a dialogue, but any feeling that's that's um, like a that's resonant with that previous thought, then I'm not free of it. Mm. It's like, you know, like when you get in an argument with your partner and it's like, okay, yeah, all right, we've made up, we're over it. But you're like, you're not really over it. You're just done logically, but your body is still not done. Mm -hmm. It's like, the chance that it flares up again is very likely. And so you want to actually get authentically complete in your whole body with it before you try to bring into mind that more beautiful possibility. 
And so for me, I mean, that's a lot of the work that I do with clients is helping them through my own sensitivity and doing that with myself, being able to feel where they're at, where they think they're at, what where they're really at and help them to learn to navigate that in, inner world. Then how do I actually let something go? Not just as a concept from like, stop talking about it in my head, but actually how do I let it go? And, you know, forgiveness, the work of Byron Katie, loving what is seeing the beauty in the idea that I can't open the jar whether it's true or not, neither of us can possibly know. But like right now, that's what's happening and, and actually falling in love with life as it is and as it's interpreted by everybody around. And then it's like, it's like, there's a, there's, a, you know what I mean? And everybody listening knows what I mean. There's a point in which you are actually okay with it in your whole body, in your whole heart. You're actually okay with it. It doesn't need to change. And I think then that's, really that's the time. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So go ahead, finish that. We're just saying, that's, no, the time. Yeah, yeah. that's the time to start creating that new possibility. So what, what I become aware of when you say that is two things. One, the reason I wouldn't do that is because I'd be wanting to skip too fast to the change. Mm -hmm. And it kind of reminds me of this idea that like, we were just talking about Hawaii before we went live. So this is what comes up, like a volcano, right? So the eruption of the volcano happens like way after all this other stuff happens under the surface. Mm -hmm. And so I think this idea of you know, changing another person is super fascinating in the context with which you're sharing it because there's all this stuff that has to happen under your surface mm -hmm. before you can have that sort of magic, so to speak, reach the mm -hmm. other person in the external mm -hmm. world. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's really important because I know for me, and probably most of the people who at least are watching from, from my side is that I'd just be wanting to skip to the please change part for, yeah. before the, like, let me slow myself down for a minute. Mm. Yeah. And you know, where this uh, awareness and practice comes from is in the realization that skipping that part in the own creation of myself has it not really work very well. Mm -hmm. Right. And so all creation of other is an expression of self creation. Everything that I do with my wife or a person is just what I do with me. And so if I try to skip it in my own forgiveness and then create some positive idea of myself that's in reaction to that other idea, it just goes, <sighs> it just gets like polarized. And I start judging myself for not being that is a mess. <laughs> this is exactly what happens. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing that came up when you were talking, which is you mentioned something. Uh, I can't remember exactly how you said it, but it was this idea that first, you have to resolve it in yourself. Like you said, I'm going to go back and do forgiveness work. Byron Katie, you listed some resources that you know mm -hmm. people may or may not know about, but we can share them. I mm -hmm. think what big, what I could imagine could be at like a looping point for people. When I say looping point, it's like they can't get past it. Would mm -hmm. be idea that no, I need the other person to be able to resolve it, to access forgiveness, to do the whole thing. That makes sense. I need the Take so me through I it again. To, I need go, go ahead. Need to dialogue with that other person. Ah, so yes. I could peace in my heart. So I yes. could get a loving place. And so I absolutely think that's true. I just no longer believe that the dialogue has to happen with that human body. It can happen with the human being. And I distinguish the human body from the human being because the body's out there, the being's in here. Mm. And so I still have conversations with my wife when I'm upset with her, but I don't always have it with the Nobody else would think I'm having with her because she's not even in the room, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I forgive you. I love you as you are. I, I, I see you this way. And she's in here. But that's the person I have a relationship with. Not the body I have a relationship with, but the person, the being. And so. That's yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> no, no. So that's, I think I'm just, we're, you know, transitioning <laughs> to the same point. Go ahead. That's that the, is the most magical distinction. I think mm. that, that that really makes the quote just to play with the language trick work, right? Because mm -hmm. you're forced in your, in which most people are, I think, at least the word we're conditioned. I have to have this verbal conversation with this other talking head, but you're mm -hmm. not hearing the talking head anyway. You're hearing mm -hmm. the ver version of them you have in mm -hmm. inside of you. And so mm -hmm. I love the idea of having a conversation with the human being, not necessarily the human body. Mm -hmm. Because it is like how you change other people, I'm just really summing it, is you change your relationship to them inside. Yes, first. yes which to really trip you out now is <laughs> another way that I access it being okay for me to change other people because they're not out there. Mm. The relationship with the person inside my head is all me. 
Vanessa, my Vanessa is in here. And so if I change my relationship with her, that changes in here. That will impact my relating and it might impact the Vanessa in you, that body over there. And that one may function differently, but I'm concerning myself with the you that's in me. I see you as strong. I see you as beautiful. I see you as powerful as a coach, right? With my clients, I'm creating my clients all the time. I would imagine too, that as a part of creating others in this way, that, that could be triggering for the other person. And I'm, I'm wondering if you've experienced this mm. or don't see me better than I see. I'm not sure in a coaching relationship, but perhaps in personal relationships, don't see me better than I see me. Have, is, that, mm. is, is that something that- I've never experienced that. I've never experienced somebody because I think when, when a person, when you're in the presence of somebody who sees you greater than you're seeing yourself, you actually experience it as true. You don't have, you don't receive it as some intellectual possibility. That's like a challenge. Like when a person is believing in you, it's actually experienced a self-belief. I think that's what you mentioned at the beginning. That's a really, that, that I'm coming back to with that because you genuinely, like you said, it's not just lip service. You're no. not just eliminating mental clutter. You're you're slowing it down and bringing it all the way into your being so that it is true for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And so that if, you, if you didn't do that, then I could see that it perhaps could come across as inauthentic, which might mm -hmm. be kind of just not, when, when something is genuinely inauthentic, it's received the same way. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll add one more layer just because we're going yeah. deep. You know, I talked about like, you know, if I'm creating another person, I'm essentially, it's all me. And so to, to bring it full circle, one of the ways I create myself is to create other people as that, which I would love to be myself. Slow that down. So if I want to be a more loving person, I see mm -hmm. loving people everywhere I go. Because if I see loving people everywhere I go, I become more loving. If I see beautiful people everywhere, not as a judgment that I'm not that, but as an expression of creation from nothing, I get what I give. If I see generous people everywhere, generosity comes through me. And so one of the reasons to create other people in the most beautiful light is because you receive it as you give it. When you create them in that, you become that. So there's like an inside out approach and an outside in, and I'm, I'm guessing that you do both. They fold into each other. Absolutely. Well, one of the ways I woke up to this was when my son was two and he had a, he was biting and, and I was trying to get him to stop biting. I was like asking for different advice, doing things, this and that, like even bit him once that didn't work. He bit me back harder. Um, and I, I was reading something in the Tao and it was just talking about meeting high intensity with low intensity. And I realized that when he was biting, I'd get upset with him and tell him no and raise my voice. It would just exacerbate it. And I was like, oh, and so I started to, next time he bit me, I just would just relax and go down on the ground and be like, oh, and, and just like, ooh, that hurts. Like just the, the more intense he was, the lower I'd make my energy. And he would mm -hmm. soften and he stopped doing it. And, and one of the things that I just started to say was gentle, gentle, easy, easy. Gentle, gentle, easy, easy, as I was relaxing. Wasn't like that's wrong. I was just leading him in the direction of lower intensity. And it started to work. So be, the, that phrase became a thing. It was just kind of a habit. Mm -hmm. And then one day I was walking into my kitchen, just absentmindedly, I don't know, after a coaching session or something. And I just heard those words. I was by myself. I just heard those words in my head. And I was like, what's that about? Then I backtracked in time and I realized, oh, I'm absentmindedly walking towards the fridge to get some chocolate and I was in the middle of a fast or like some like clean diet thing. And so I, that wasn't the plan. And my mind judged me for not being committed, not being just some, some kind of micro judgment just showed up in my mind. And then without even realizing it, another part of my mind was like gentle, gentle, easy, easy. So my mind spontaneously treated myself in the way that I had been conditioning myself to treat my son when he was biting. So his act of violence, it, so the development of the practice of gentle, gentle, easy, easy towards my son wasn't held in my mind as something that I do to him. It was a, it was a conditioned way of relating from one place of possibility in, in, towards some act of violence or, or intensity. 
And so my mind doesn't differentiate between relationship to self and relationship to others. It's just like this works for that. And so as I saw that, I realized that like, shit, if I'm doing something out here with another person, my mind is going to use it against or in service of me and against me either way. And if I'm doing things in service of my mind, then I actually automatically do it. If I treat myself that way, then I tr will treat others that way too. And so, I, yeah, yeah no, the self other boundary just dissolves. Mm -hmm. And what you, what you start to experience is like this idea that I am the person in this body and you are the person in that body. It's like between, you know, with this experience and the idea that you live inside me, it's like. That brings it really full circle. That brings it really full circle. Um, I'll, I'll ask you one more question in a minute, but I love how, gosh, I don't even know if we need it. That just feels so grounding. Like what I'm hearing is if you want to change others, you first have to come to, from a place of love, eliminate mm. my judgments to change that person, but for you and that person, and ultimately mm. it ends up changing. And that's just really beautiful. Mm. It is. Is there anything you feel like we missed that's really important for somebody who has gone from this conditioned idea that A, people don't change, B, even if they did, it's wrong to change them, and C, even if it wasn't wrong, you couldn't do it, <laughs> to this other way of like, <laughs> it's good for you, it's good for them, and there is no you or them. <laughs> is there anything yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to land on? To me, it like, you know, being married and being a dad now and being a coach, like the greatest gift I have to, to give in all these unions is the greater possibility that exists be because we've come together. That's called changing a person. Like our function is to, is to, is to merge into each other and to become something transcendent of the both of us. And so um, I guess the only thing that I would add then is to, is to find great purpose in making the most beautiful um, evolution of every relationship of, of both beings. It's going to happen anyway. So have a, have a loving role in it, you know, bring consciousness to bear. Consciousness is a beautiful thing. It serves a function. A lot of people want to steer clear of it. It's like, okay, well it showed up for a reason. So um, let's use it. I remember years ago, uh, I was struggling with SIBA in terms of our created life vision. And you said, mm. let your vision go. Mm. Let his vision go, create a new one. And mm -hmm. I didn't do that until mm, November 2021. But <laughs> the lag time, but it still works. <laughs> and, and I think that's really beautiful. It's going to happen anyway. It's mm. already happening. Mm -hmm. it's Welcome. It. Yeah. So how can people find you? What is the way you'd like them to come into your world right now? Is there anything in particular that you want to share? Um, I mean, this is, this show is for more than coaches, right? Like it's for just human beings. Yeah. Cause like I, I do a lot of work with coaches, helping them make more money through love so that, you know, we can include a link for people if they're that, but you know, most of all, just like follow my world and my work through social media, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, the kind of main places that I hang out um, and uh, send me a message to say hello. But yeah, you can just throw some links to my social media profiles and they Perfect. can follow well, along. Actually, a lot of the people who follow me are also coaches and entrepreneurs. So I did link your training under there. So cool. awesome. um, you know, to those who are participating, thanks for being here. If this serves you, share it with someone that you love, perhaps even someone that you're trying to change. <laughs> yeah. Someone you don't love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> not so subtle message right. um, and jp thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom i expand exponentially every time i'm in your presence and so i have a ton of gratitude to you you're so welcome i love you vanessa thank you so much bye-bye bye-bye